Hey, it's Mark with Mark's Virtual Real Estate Channel. We're back in Upland, and I've got a few things I want to talk about today. One thing is really exciting, and I think will help Upland a ton, and the other is not so exciting and kind of annoying, and that's the gamified earnings that we've talked about before. So Upland is a virtual trading real estate game. You can buy properties or the exact same lot in real life. That's what I was attracted to as a real real estate investor. But Upland over time has kind of gone away from that and gone towards a lot of other things. And I'm not a huge fan of that as many of you know. So recently Upland changed how earnings were on properties. And so um, I'm in Rutherford right now, which is probably strange for many of you. I'll talk to you about why I'm there. Look at racetrack or Interesting. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Upland used to pay 14.7% per property. Uh, we've talked about before how it'd be nice if buildings were different, if they gave you some incentive to build some different, you know, a reason for utility, things like that. You can have shops and buildings, but that's about it. There's not much else. So Upland decided to change all the earnings and reduce them quite a bit. So now the base went from 14.7 to like five or something like that. But then you can do these things to make your base rate go up to 14.7 again or 15.2 if you do all of them, which is virtually impossible for most people. So I won't go into all of that. My last video did that. But along with this, it has caused me to do some changes in how I play the game and coupled with Upland Tycoons, which I think is a really good thing, it has made me do some treasure hunting, which I never did before really. So there is some good happening in Upland, but it's not really Upland doing it, it's more <laughs> Tycoons, which is a second layer third party that has started Tycoons, and it's a lot of fun and I, ha I think has a lot of opportunity. I also thought that with Kingdoms, but Kingdoms had a lot of limitations as far as getting UPX back out of it, making money, and um, how it's set up. It's still fun, but it, it had some limitations. Tycoons, I think, has fixed a lot of those problems, and we'll talk about that. And I'm probably gonna be putting a lot of money into Tycoons and we'll see how it goes, because I'm not real confident in where Upland is going by itself. All right, so as far as the earnings go, like I said, um, this is the earnings you get on a property. If they're in collections, they're boosted. And then it's, it could be 14.7% per year. You know, they'll give you, these are the monthly earnings. So that can be confusing for people when they see this and be like, oh, that's not 14.7%. Well, that's, this is your monthly here. And the 14.7 is your yearly. So you've got to do some calculations to get that corrected. Now they have a leaderboard, which is right here. And super annoying. These leaderboards. Um, for one, I can't put my name in on mobile. If I'm using on mobile, I can't put my name in, which means it's almost impossible to find anything on mobile. And then um, I've got to go down here and try and get this thing to scroll over, which almost never works. So then I've got to expand it and then it expands huge and I've got to scroll down and then it kind of works, but it's just the user friendliness of Upland is probably at an all time low right now. But anyway, here are all the things you can do. I've logged in for seven days straight, so I got that. I visited five cities. One easy way to do that is to go to the New York area and just take the train around to all the different boroughs and that should get you there. So that's easier than it kind of appeared in the beginning. And then again, if I can click down, nope, can't, gotta go down farther for some reason. There we go. Uh, I found some treasures, which was amazing. <laughs> I've got three total points. So my multiplier, you gotta scroll back down, go back uh, over here, okay, is 9.8%. But I should have a 25 day login, which is one of them, which will get me to 12, and then I need one more to get to 14.7, which could be, uh, I might collect three comp treasures with my treasure hunting just by accident. And um, what else was there? I'm not racing. I'm not completing the builds. They, they want you to build stuff, but they're not giving any incentive for having builds. So that's probably the one I'm going to have to do. Unless I want to mint some properties. We'll see. But we'll get this out of here. Um, so that's how I'm doing. And the thing is, they're going to change it every time, probably every season. So we don't know what the next time will be. So I just think that's incredibly annoying having to do that now especially as an investor where i want to spend you know less time on the game not more so the only saving grace in all this recently is tycoons and that's why i'm in rutherford because it's easier to treasure hunt there it's cheaper 
and Tycoons gives you rewards for sending to properties now. So here is the UPX Spark Exchange, which has created Tycoons, and they also rent Spark. So I never used this before. I really should have, but you know, like I said, I don't have time to look through everything and go through everything. But you can go on here, and you can rent Spark. So um, I actually have one of my um, buildings being rented right now. But these are people listing buildings that you can donate spark to and it's really simple all you have to do is go to the property and donate your spark there and it automatically calculates it for you it's so easy like their ease of use on the spark exchange is amazing <laughs> right um but you can go on there and they charge the person who's getting the spark a fee and then you get money for donating your spark to them it's 8.55 upx per hour it tells you all that it what that is and it's a great way to use your spark if you're not using it and you can also um, rent Spark out to people. And what I have done here is I'm renting Spark out to myself, which seems kind of weird because it charges me a fee to do that. But there's bonuses with Tycoons if you do that. So um, if we go to Spark Tycoons, uh, there's lots of information on here and different things. There's so many different things to go over. I don't have time to go over all of it, but I want to give you a basic um, idea of how it works. So you have Spark Tycoons and you need buildings for it to work. So this is given utility to buildings where Upland hasn't really so much. Um, Kingdoms also gave some utility, but that's the problem with second layers. They could just disappear and a lot of the money, time you spend on those could be gone. Uh, you can build a lumber mill, ore mine, small wooden windmill, um, furnaces, these different things, and they produce goods. So they'll produce, you know, lumber or, or energy which you can then sell on the Spark Exchange or use to build more of these. So it doesn't take any time to build them. You just have to have 60 lumber, 20 ore, 20 energy to build a small lumber mill. And you can get those by either sending, so while you're treasure hunting or just sending to um, not your own properties, but someone else's property. And that's what gives you a daily loot. So. Um, let me go here to my dashboard really fast. And this is my dashboard. This tells me how much UPEX I have. This is just Spark Exchange. I can deposit money in here. I can also take it out. Of course, there's fees charged when you do that. But this is, I can do, like take UPEX from Spark Exchange and send it straight to Upland, which is nice. You couldn't really do that in Kingdoms. So I have structures without note slots and empty note slots. So that's why you have to have a building to do this and I click on this and it shows me all the structures I have all over the world and if I want to unlock one it costs a thousand upix and I can unlock a slot and that is where I can put one of those mines or lumber mills or windmills now if you look at this again if you have apartments you have multiple slots but again they cost a thousand upix each however this is where the spark rental comes into play. If you list your property on the spark exchange and you pay the fee and you get help from people or just build it yourself like I did, you get one free node slot for that property you build on the spark exchange. So that saves you a thousand. Also, you get two research things, which I'll show you in a second, but that's also worth um, upping. So you get some money back by using spark exchange and that's why I was doing it that way. So there's some pros and cons to how you do it and set it up. And there's, they have a Discord. There's all kinds of information out there. A lot of this information was given to me by others. Like I am Redbeard. Thank you so much. Um, and our Nippons at Lazy Note people. But why it's attractive to me is because if we do some math, we'll get my calculator out. But f actually first, we're going to go to the marketplace. This is where you can buy and sell energy. And there is a fee to sell it, but there's no fee to buy it. So you can see energy costs 249 UPEX right now. And it's been pretty steady for a week or two. It was way higher than it dropped back down. And you can buy these to build your nodes. So we'll just put this in, let's say you need 20 energy to build an ore mine and times 250. So you need 5,000 UPEX in energy, right? Well, we can go down here, click on ore, ore is 80 upix right now, we'll say, which has been pretty stable. Um, remember 5,000. So we have 80 times 60, which is what you need to build that plus 5,000, simple math, 9,800. 
remember that number, 9,800. Then we go to lumber. Lumber is 45. You need 20 of those to build. Plus 9,800. You need about 11,000 Upix to build an ore mine right now. If I did that math right, that sounds about what it should be. Now, that ore is selling for about 75, 80, like we saw. And an ore mine produces six of those a day. So six times 80, we'll make it, that's 480 times 30 days in a month. It pretty much makes more money than it costs in a month right now to create an ore mine. Now there's a chance the prices could go down. You could not make as much investment. That could definitely happen. But that's why so many people are doing tycoons right now because the math shows you that, well, you had $1,000 for the node if you paid for that, plus you need your building, right, if you don't have one. So that would add to the cost there. But if you have those already, if you're adding nodes to your structures, then you can make a lot of upix like that's a almost a hundred percent monthly return. And with Upix yield, we're talking about a 14% yearly return. So if we uh, just assume this is a hundred percent, I mean, this is not the exact math we should be doing, but it's like 1200% a year. Um, divided by 14.7, that's 81 times the earnings of what Upland is doing themselves. So a lot of people are doing tycoons right now because of that math. And even if these prices drop, if things you know drop a bunch, you're still way ahead of the game for investing your upex into tycoons and building that up as opposed to you know going for more properties, yield in Upland. So. This is why I put money into it, and I've been not like my real money, but my up, Upex money from Upland that was already there, and why I have built six lumber mills and 13 small ore mines so far. I have one windmill. Now, you can also buy properties that have these already on them, too. So you can go to, oh, I, where do we go for that? Yeah, the buildings analytics. And so I can click on here. I can look for apartment buildings. I can go to Detroit. And then it'll show me all these apartment buildings. It's supposed to be improved soon because would, I would love to be able to, uh, oh, I can put Upix too. Sort through this better. But I can scroll down and it'll keep scrolling eventually. But if it has any nodes already built, it will show up on here. Are those all the apartments that are for sale right now? So maybe we need to take that off and uh, look at all buildings. But it will show you, hey, there's one node here. And so you can actually sort on here a little bit by where nodes are for sale. And so instead of building one, you can buy one already. There's probably a premium for it, of course, but that's a way to get involved too. So there's lots of different ways that you can build these, create these, and make money on them. Now for right now, I feel like the small ore mine is the best bang for your buck, but that could change if lots of people are building them right now because they feel the same way. That could change in the future. Uh, the small wooden windmill produces one energy every 24 hours, but it takes a lot of energy to build it, so it's much more expensive. Uh, the lumber mill you know, it takes about the same as a small ore mine to build as far as resources go, but lumber is way cheaper. So it's cheaper to build, but also returns a cheaper return because lumber is priced much less. So there's all kinds of things going on here and I can collect my items that I've got 18 ore. And then I'll just click right here and check my inventory and I can see what I've got and how close I am to building more stuff. So like I said, you can also get money by sending. So I've got my zero daily loot boxes if I were to go back into Upland and I went to Rutherford, I've been treasure hunting because if I'm going to be doing sends to get some of these this loot, then I might as well do some treasure hunting. And I was in the Bronx and different places and it's actually horrible to treasure hunt there. But Rutherford is very easy and very cheap. So I can just send over here. Again, I have to do treasure hunting on my phone. I can't do it on the PC, which is super annoying. 
again. Um, but I can do that and we'll send to right here. Oh, that's another hint too, if people don't know that. When you're sending to properties and they have a box or you know some kind of item on them, usually that means they're the cheapest send in the area. Not always, but usually that means it's the cheapest send so you don't have to search around for the cheapest send because sending each property costs a little different. So we've done that. We go back here. Look, I've got two loot boxes and um, that should increase my inventory. So by doing those two sends, which cost me 20 Upix, I gained one ore, is that it? And 18, oh, that's item. Oh yeah, that was for uh, when I collected my items, but uh, I found one ore. So that ore is worth 80 epics. I gained 70 epics in that one little action right there, which is very easy and simple. And so if you're treasure hunting, it takes a little bit more time. You have to do it on your phone, but you can just do this too if you don't care about treasure hunting. And you can get some sparks, some other, you know, earnings if you treasure hunt as well. So there's pros and cons to both of them. And uh, I've easily taken care of my treasure chests for the requirement for the Upix yield by doing this. And then if you're in Rutherford, it's really easy to get standard treasure hunts as well, which could be another way that I get my earnings up, upped in their gamified stuff. Now I do find it interesting how Upland has been making videos about everything and all their accomplishments and everything they do, but they have not made a video about the gamified earnings change yet. Why? I mean, my theory is they might not get a good response on their YouTube, but I do find that interesting and we'll see if they ever do make a video about it. All right, so Tycoons is fun. It's kind of gotten me a little bit excited about Upland again. My concerns with this is that Upland could decide to change the rules or decide that they don't like this game for some reason and then it becomes obsolete. There's always a chance that the Spark Tycoon could stop doing it, but it's a little bigger um, enterprise than Kingdoms was. They have a little more resources, I think, and I think it's been very successful for them in making them a lot of Upix because they do charge fees when you sell stuff, when you rent Spark, when you do all that, so it should be very advantageous for them. Hopefully it keeps going. Like I said, prices could drop, things could change, but for right now, it's giving people an incredible return and for me, I've just been taking that return and just building as much as I can. And I'll probably be taking more Upix and putting it into Spark Tycoon because it's way more fun for me to do this right now than Upland. And I've talked about Upland being an investment and being fun at the same time. And it's been kind of neither lately fun nor a good investment. Maybe this will change it, maybe not. But there are some risks there too in that it's separate from Upland and we don't exactly know what Upland's gonna do. If this becomes too successful and takes focus from them, who knows? Just pure speculation. All right, love to hear what you think and what you're up to. Like I said, there's some other videos that tell you exactly how to get onto Spark Tycoon, how to get um, you know, set up with it. It's just UPX Spark Exchange is where you go and you can log in and then they'll link you to the game to make sure you're a player and it will automatically you know, link to your account once you get there. And it's very simple, very easy. To, to figure this out and get started. So um, hopefully this helped. Love to know what you think, and um, we'll see how Upland progresses from here.